All righty, guys. This is KM Ken Drum, and today I have a super awesome special guest. But before I uh, let you in on who this is, I got to tell you to go to my website because I got some really cool things. I've been trying to put some blog uh, posts up every day. If not every day, maybe every other day. So there's always something really cool on it. So kmkendrum.com, check it out. Um, so today I have a friend that goes way, way back. I mean, I'm talking maybe like 2003 or so. Um, I first met Amy at um, this studio in, in Culver City, I believe. And she was recording um, this really awesome album. And I'd never been... Uh, on a pop album before. And I actually don't think I even did any drums on it, but we were putting together a live band and her stuff, her voice just blew me away. Um, I honestly thought that we were going to like rule the world. Things Shut happened. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't quite end up that way, but um, nonetheless, we've stayed friends ever since. And uh, I just want to welcome Amy Lynn Chadwick. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Um, wow, my voice was really high right there. <laughs> <laughs> so Amy is uh, an established singer and actress. Um, she's been on quite a few things. Uh, I'll put links to all of the stuff that she's been on um, in the description so you guys know. But uh, Amy and I were, were in a couple of bands together. Um, mm -hmm. The first band, did we even call ourselves something or was it just your name? Yeah, I think it was just my name. Yeah, I, so. yeah, because for all of that, like, there when we were like shopping for record deals and stuff, there, there was like one record label that's like, yeah, we'll give you all, you just change your name to Willow, and it was like Buffy the Vampire Slayer was going on at that time, and like there was a character on there, and now I think about it, and I'm like, I should have just changed my freaking name to Willow. <laughs> Like, like, yeah. like, no, I like wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, why didn't I just change my name? <laughs> um, but yeah, I like, I remember for two and a half days, like I really toiled over this and I was like, no, I just want to be me. So I kept it Amy and that's why it was Amy. And that's why we imagine? never, if I changed my name to Willow, I'd be dead. <laughs> like I would, like if I was, if I made it, if we made it and we were like famous and I think I was so insecure at that time, just like I was just, I don't know. I just think at that age, I can see why people, you know, fall because I know for a fact, like I would have self-destructed. I just yeah. wasn't ready. That's why I, mean, I haven't taken over the world yet. How old were you? Um, I was... A very young, when I first got to L.A., I was 20. And uh, a very young 20. Because, I mean, I was playing Barbies till I was 17. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, fine. Only, but... Probably only like five or ten people will watch this anyway. <laughs> Look, I played Barbies with my niece over the weekend. And she was like, oh, you're so good at this. I'm like, yeah, we need a commercial break. Uh, <laughs> we're still on it. No, but. Um, yeah, it was just, I, I grew up in a very small town and I did like community theater and like, I was just a good kid. Like I never went to parties and I, I just always went to regular school and then dance class or theater school or like singing lessons. And I was just always doing that stuff. And then when I got to LA, it was like, I was by myself too. You know, yeah. and a lot of crap happened in my life. And, like, I was just, like, woo, great. And, like, all of these people, yeah, it was, it was, I lost myself because I just thought of, like, what that was like. Yeah, I was young. And, like, these people would, like, these grown men would, like, be in this room. But I was just so blind to it. Like, I just was naive. So if some executive was trying to, like, hit on me, like, no. Like, I just... There was nothing there. Like, I, they weren't having it. And I wasn't really, like, a good target with that. Yeah. I wasn't one to – you'll never – I mean, you held it in so well because when 
when all of this was going on and we were all playing as a band together, we were playing shows and we were in the studio and all of that stuff. Um, unless I'm super naive, which I don't think I am, like you never let it affect you. Like w whenever we were on stage, you were just like in the zone. And whenever we were even just like hanging out, like you were always this happy, positive person. And like fast forward 10 years and we're talking about all of the things that had, that had happened to you around that mm. time. I mean, it just like blows my mind. Like I, I, I know I'm kind of like talking about something that a lot of my audience doesn't know, um, but just trust me that a lot of crazy, crazy LA things happened to Amy yeah. and around Amy and she never let it affect her professionally. I, I think that's amazing because if half of the stuff happened to me that happened to you, I probably would have either ended up in jail or <laughs> been crazy or something. Uh, oh, Kelly, I should have. There was, I just remember one night I, you know, I think I let it get to me alone. Like when I was with you or the guys, like our bandmates, like, or on stage or in the studio, that's my happy place. So of course I'm gonna be happy there because that's like where I wanna be. But like in my alone time, like I remember one night just, I drank like so much tequila at, in like at some stupid thing at in Studio City and like just bad things happened there. And I was just, I was fed up. I was like, I can't deal with this. And I got in my car, which I shouldn't have. And I remember having a cherry Tootsie Pop in my mouth because I always eat those. And I was leaning out the window, driving down Lancashire Boulevard, yelling to cops to pull me over. Just put me in jail. Put me out of my misery. Like a crazy person. But no one did. Like no mm -hmm. one would. And so then I, I got the term, like, I can't even get arrested in this city. <laughs> <laughs> I can get harassed. I can get, you know, I can do things for exposure which people yeah. die of, but yeah, I can't get arrested in this city. Crazy. It's so crazy. Yeah. It's all crazy. So, yeah. So Amy and I go way back. And so way back. And Kelly's and like the best drummer ever in, in like the kindness <laughs> and I love him and my family loves him. And Ah, I love your family. Oh I mean, my gosh. We went to. My mom's obsessed with you. Yeah, she, she loves <laughs> the baby. You're like, you, oh, how could you not? <laughs> The baby's the cutest thing ever. Yeah, she's she's awesome. Um, but yeah, every time, like, it, it's crazy. I still listen to a lot of that old Amy stuff. Me too. Um, <laughs> actually, two or three songs that uh, I would probably put in the top, easily top 20 of songs that I just, like, will, will listen to. No matter what, I'll listen to it frequently, and I'll listen to the, the whole song. All the way through because I'm at that age now where I, I've got enough ADD where I listen to like two minutes of a song and I'll be like, okay, I, I, I can go to the next song. You used to be, I, I would like get so pissed off if someone like turned the car off when the song was still going. Mm -hmm. Now it's not like that anymore, except for a handful of songs and two or three of the songs from, from that old album that we did with London. Uh, are, are two of those songs. And then also the stuff that we did with uh, Chase, uh, sorry, Char Charles Shaw. Char 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 which, love. yeah, that was like, that was like a really awesome thing. That was the first for me because first we had Kate on bass. Yes. Like upright. Yeah. Right. And it was like, I, I never played with actual drumsticks. It was always those like brush thingies. So that was a completely new thing for me. I'll be forever grateful because TJ, who played guitar in the band, um, the unfortunate part was, well, it was fortunate. Like we, we dated, we, we like, but then that came to an end. And then unfortunately the band did, but we're friends now we talk. Um, but he, I was still doing Chasing Amy and this was like the little side project. And he just had a has a really brilliant mind and like he really pulled me out of that whole space and like pulled this other part of me out that I wanted to share to the world but I was kind of being pushed into this like 
Britney Spears, Avril Lavigne, actually, I should say. Avril yeah. Lavigne, like, space. And, like, I was deeper than that. And um, with that, he he was able, it just it was so cool how he just played a little riff. And then all of a sudden, like, it was like a channel. And, like, I would just write. And, like, no, I didn't have five men around me telling me, like, oh, you can't put that word there. Yes, I can, mofo. Because it's my yeah. song, you know? I just wrote it. It's right there. That's how yeah. it goes. And don't get me wrong. As I get older, like, I realize, like, being in a writer's room is one of the most rewarding things you could be, like, having, bouncing things off. But that was such, like, a learning experience for me and a growth. Uh, I was able to grow with that because I was able to build confidence with, you know, exactly. writing songs. Yeah, you can't get into a writer's room without first doing it yourself and knowing like what you can and can't do, what you can do good and what you can't do good. Yeah. And then going into that writer's room, bringing your best and then having other people make what you're not so good at better as well. Better. So mm -hmm. you're able to like, you know, bounce things off because you know yourself so well. And yeah. The only way you know yourself so well is by writing in the first place by yourself. Yeah. You know, so... Yeah, it's 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 crazy. Like the the whole the two bands that that I was in with you, I mean, nothing but great great memories. And you know, yeah. even though they didn't end up the way that we had hoped, like we didn't achieve the I guess the end goal. Still, I I I look back and I'm so like super proud of the things that we did. And if I'm proud and all I did was play drums, you have to be like extremely proud because I feel like even though, you know, like there were some dark times and, and, and a lot of bad things happened to you at the same time, if you kind of try to strip that all away and you look at the body of work, I think uh, it's, it's pretty impressive. Thanks. I don't think I would have the work if the bad things didn't happen, you know, because what would I have to way, write yeah. about? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when so when everything went awry with the first album, like the only reason we didn't get the record deal is because I had broken my pelvis um, in a motocross accident while I was filming something. And like there was oh a whole. God, that's right. That's why, because it was the day it happened the day before. Um, we were supposed to have a, uh, what's it called? The, the Bears. signing, like whatever the thingy with Jay-Z or whatnot. And then I broke my pelvis in three places and they were like, oh, you're never going to walk again. And then they said, you know, your health comes first. Uh, music will always be around. Just take care of yourself. Peace. And I'm like, no, <laughs> right. Basically. And so then I like end up flying to Romania filming two movies back to back with a broken pelvis and then coming back and just like losing my mind a little bit. And, uh, Brett, who was my guitar player and like the band leader, he ended up really pulling me out of that and helping me channel it into music. And that's how, uh, chasing Amy came about. Cause he was like, you and your fan club, fan club meeting for <laughs> <laughs> uh and so then from that like you know we all we just then we we got the another boy pulled me away from that and then we did the trail shot but yeah we had good times and i do i listen to that music and i'm every single word and every single song like means so much to me and it's it takes me back to that place and it does make me feel grateful. So grateful. Yeah. Cause it's, it's freaking. it was before it's time. Generation next was before it's time. That's all I have to say. It's a good totally. album. Go, go listen to it on Spotify and like, seriously make like, what is it? Remixes of it. Cause it's good <laughs> <laughs> and give you all permission. It really is. It's kind of almost timeless. Like you can listen to it now and be convinced that, it's something that's out now. My 28-year-old nephew, like, wrote to me the other day. He's like, auntie. He's like, I was just bumping Generation Next. This is a <laughs> banger. I'm like, thanks, bud. <laughs> He's like, no, it always comes up in my playlist. 
That's awesome. Yeah. So. Cool. Well, uh, I I have some questions for you. I want to know if you're. Uh, if Whip you're them at me. All righty. Okay, so we're gonna start with some singer related questions. Mm -hmm. um, the first question I always ask my musician friends because uh, playing music, uh, being in the music culture is a, a huge commitment. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of time, emotional stress, whatnot. All the, the levels are super high. I wanna know how long you've been in this relationship with music, singing and, and writing songs and all that. Okay, so I came out of the closet as a singer when I was 12 because I was painfully shy my whole life, but I started singing when, no lie, I started talking when I was six months old because I died when I was a baby and then I came back super smart. That's another story, but I swear to God it happened. Ask anyone <laughs> in my family. It's true. Um, so I started singing when I, like, you know, Annie and like all of that stuff and Whitney Houston. But I was so shy in front of everyone else that I would have, I would carry around a little recorder and I would sing in the closet or in the bathroom. And then one day when I was ready to sing for the world, like I was about maybe 11 or 12. And then I auditioned in front of like a million people. And my mom's like, you have to audition in front of 600 people and you can't sing. And I was like, Ugh, amateur. <laughs> and so then I sang and like, and, like, I, my mom only allowed me to listen to show tunes and Motown growing up, like, oldies and stuff, which, wow. when I was younger, I was, like, once I heard pop, I'm, like, oh, I and I have to listen to it. But now I'm, like, oh, my God, that was, like, the greatest music to listen to because it's my favorite music ever. Like, it's just where it's at. So I was very blessed in that. But, yeah. Did I answer your question? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> you asked me, like, how long is my relationship? Yeah. Yeah. There you cool. Go. Yeah. So the one thing that um, I like to tell all of my guests is there's Excuse no me. wrong answer. I what? totally just burped. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Normally it would be louder, but I was like, oh, my God, I'm on camera. Yeah, I wish it was louder. Next time, don't, okay. don't hold it in. So it was like, oh. that's, that's the rule. Don't hold anything in. Okay. Be all natural. <laughs> 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 okay. There you go. <laughs> Oh, I miss band practice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Me too, man. Oh. Well, if you're ever in Philly, uh, I got a little drum room in there. Heck yeah. Also, likewise. Awesome. I have okay. tiny drums behind this. Really? There's actually, like a, yeah, there's baby drums. Like a Hello Kitty set or something like no, that? No, they're like, they're probably really good. They're, oh. um, well, they're performance plus. Whatever okay. that means. Um, yeah, Adam bought him for his nephew when, when he was, like, little, but then he never used him. Huh. So we, we have a little baby drum kit. Oh, cool. And then the little recording studio in the closet. Wow. Well, I, I, I should come out and, and rock out to the little drum set. Do oh, it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. okay, so let's see. Um, I actually have... Uh, a, a long list of questions. I want to ask you all of them, but I'm not going to. That's why that's too long. <laughs> now that I'm I mean, here. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> the buildup. The oh, buildup okay. was so painful. No, whatever you want, whatever is good for you. Okay, great. Um, if you could sing a duet with anyone, who would it be? Butch Walker. Really? Right. Mm -hmm. He's. Uh, what's he? Do is he doing anything now? Yeah. Besides writing songs. Um, yeah, he's coming out with a new record soon. Cool. Um, yeah, he's, I don't know. I think if like I was a guy, well, you know how people are like, oh, who's your favorite singer? And then you're, you're being, you're a girl and you're expected to say like, uh, Christina Aguilera, blah, blah, blah. like when I was younger, maybe I liked her or whatever, but I've always looked more towards like. I loved Michael Jackson, or I love, like, um, gosh, I love Butch Walker. I love Steven Tyler. Like, I always try to em emulate, like, those types of voices, and I just feel like his songwriting I relate to a lot. And so I just would die in a good way if 
I that's like one of my dreams is just to have like that one opportunity to just to do a duet with him. It would he's, be amazing. He's crazy. I remember. He's I, so I, good live, like so. Oh good. my god! I saw him at the whiskey with Marvelous Three, mm-hmm. and the the stuff that they pulled on stage, like. My my friend Joey and I, we were in a band way back when, in, in 98, I think, when we saw them at the Whiskey. So, you know, personal setting, really small. And here he is, like, singing with an insane voice, mm-hmm. playing these crazy-ass guitar riffs. And then, like, out of nowhere, he just, like, throws the pick. Mm-hmm. And the bass player throws his pick. And he catches the bass player's pick. And the bass player catches the guitar player's pick, his pick, and they just, like keep playing like as if nothing happened. He's, in my opinion, like the the last living rock star. You know what I mean? Like, like he's truly a rock star. Yeah. But like, so I feel like he's so humble, and he's just he gives. I. I it's, he just gives so much in his live shows. Like, I, I'm obsessed. My mom thinks I'm obsessed. I'm not obsessed, mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, I'm, you know, when you're just so inspired by someone, yeah. like, I'm just, I'm, yeah. Butch Walker, all the way. He's my number one. Awesome. Duet, duet city. I, I, I cannot, I cannot argue that at all. Uh, he's, he's definitely great. Um, who and is I've, your, oh, sorry, no. Oh, Go no, ahead. I'm like, and I've tried, like, I'm like, hey, let's do a duet together. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. I, I'm like, yeah. But we'll see. We'll see it, if that happen. ever turns. Uh, that's what, I'm just putting it out there. One day. <laughs> I might be 60, but hey. Who knows? That, that's fine. And like we said before I started recording. Age doesn't really matter anymore. It's, it doesn't exist. Not... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, um, okay. Here's a good one. Do you prefer okay. to be on stage or in the studio? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, it's hard. I know. It's a hard one. <laughs> I don't. Okay. So. I I pref- I love being on stage. What and I but I love being in the studio and I love recording. What I don't love about the studio is just like the sometimes people like I like to go in if I have an idea and I know what I want to do, like I like to go in and work and like get it done and like let's make this song. And then if you're working with somebody like it just takes forever (laughs) and like you go in at 1 p.m on a Wednesday and you come out like three freaking days later and you're just like where is my brain just I can't even so with but it, it just depends it depends on like what you're working on and stage Awesome answer. Yeah. Sorry, you know, I just had to work through that one. <laughs> yeah, there's there's definitely magic that you can make uh, in the studio. Yeah. But I feel like it, it it kind of is few and far between. Whereas I feel like every time you're on stage, you can make magic happen. Yeah, and it can be different every time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> cool. But I, I love have, that answer. I mean, but I have had like. The studio saved me sometimes, you know, just yeah. be having having that to go to, like yeah. having that refuge. So it just depends. And just like uh, what we were saying, without the stage, I mean, without the studio, you can't really have the stage. So no, so you need it. You yeah. kind of need them both. Yeah. The chicken and the egg. Yeah, totally. I that's, want it that's, all. That's actually the second time I've heard that reference today. It's so weird. You have? Yeah. It's all happening. (laughs) It's crazy. (laughs) So I want to know, why singing? (sighs) 
What a good question. Um, I don't know. I mean, I do know. How do you articulate that? For me, like, I, I've always had a very, I have, like, six guitars. I have keyboards. I have violins. I've dabbled. I have flutes. I have, I've dabbled in instruments. And I, nothing, like, my fingers don't work, you know, proper. Like, I just, I've never felt connected to them the way that I can feel like connected to a song it's like a vibration like it's like it's not me anymore it's like something else because I always say I can't sing like I don't think I have a good voice by any stretch of the imagination but it comes from my heart and so it's my form of expression your voice is your instrument yeah yeah it's like like I actually had, I had a a, a a former guest or a previous guest um, explain it in a way that completely makes sense to me. Um, so I, he was a drummer and I asked him why drums. And he said, because I get it. I try to explain it to other people. They don't get it. They might be into uh, cigars and, and car races and whatnot. And they try to explain it to me, and I don't get it. But mm-hmm. the drums, I get. So yeah. I feel like with each person's instrument, they just they, they get it. You know, there's a sense of natural. You have to have some sort of natural ability. And then that natural ability, like when you, you say, oh, I can, I can actually kind of sing. I can, I can hold a tune, or I can play a beat. That gives you just enough to want to learn more. Yeah. And it's that passion and excitement of something that you feel like you have this like inner innate ability to do to make it you keep going. Yeah. It's like little breadcrumbs that you like find along the path. And yeah. the farther down that path you go, the the bigger the, the breadcrumbs get, the more, you know, you acquire talent wise and exposure uh, that's uh, experience wise and whatnot and then you mm-hmm. just kind of are in this world of singing or playing drums or whatever it is and you just get it and for some people they just don't get it and i, I felt like his answer was was such an awesome answer because it i get it yeah i get it like i didn't choose to sing or want to have that desire like it chose me like there's yeah. days when I wake up and I'm like, I can't do this. Like, no one cares. Like, I can't stop. And when I do stop and when I do try to turn it off, like, I'm miserable. Yeah. And I might not be, like, that person, but I'm me. That's This is me singing. This is how I do it. And I need it to survive, like, oxygen. I need it to live. Like, it's – I sing – what do you want for breakfast? Like I sing all day, like, <laughs> like all day. Like I'm always making up songs. Like, oh my gosh, yeah, my whole like just everything. Like I'm the Diddy Queen, even if it's just <laughs> even if it's just that. Like I just yeah, it's just something I get and I need. So I I agree with that answer. Oh I, yeah, I'll take his answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alton, you hear that? You've got a you've got a good answer, a, a lasting answer here. Good answer, okay. Walt. Um, <laughs> Walty. I have a couple of a couple of more. Let's see. Ah, if you could live any one singer's life or have their portfolio, who would it be? Stevie Nicks. Duh. Nice. Okay. See, I, I would disagree with you. I Why? like um, I like Christine McVie more than Stevie Nicks. Teach their own. <laughs> Stevie Nicks is my fairy godmother. Ah, sweet. Yeah, I she's... don't know. She's just so witchy and magical. And I mean, what a life. And Fleetwood Mac. And just like, I just feel like she's my spirit animal. That's <laughs> awesome. Like, I, I relate to her. See, that's why wow. we work so well as a team. Because you relate to Stevie Nicks. I relate to Christine McVie. Mm-hmm. And it's just that whole balance thing going on. I love it. The yin and, and the yang. 
I, I hope one day um, YouTube lifts their ban of uh, Fleetwood Mac songs because it would be amazing. If that's you I... what I would do. That's what I was. Oh, my gosh. When you said that before, that's what I thought in my head that I would feel comfortable doing. Like we could do dreams or something. Oh, yeah. So like, YouTube. let's do it. Oh, my gosh. Why don't band. we live in the same city right now? <laughs> I want to play music so bad. OK. Yeah. Oh, so that's. That was a side question that I wanted to ask you is like, are you doing anything music wise right now? So I basically have not done anything music wise in like a year. Um, a lot's happened this year. I mean, I've tried. I, If you hear my phone, like I've just recently like, wrote songs into my phone and like, so it's coming back, but sometimes I will go through just like a flood. Like I went through 2015 to 16. I think I wrote like 30 songs and none of them ever like aside from like maybe two got recorded and they're all like I wrote a full album plus. And what? That wasn't the stuff. What was the that stuff was, that? That was only like a no. That was like so. I wrote that, and then I wrote a full album after that uh, that you haven't okay. even heard. But I have all like the. I have it. I have it all, and it's wow. like a whole. It's like a whole like chunk of period. Like it's a time. Like it's a it's a mood. Like you know how like um, the Charles Shaw one. Like that was a time. Like Definitely these these are times. Um, yeah, and then all of a sudden, I just, I got happy. <laughs> <laughs> and um, usually, when I'm really, truly happy, which used to be rare, um, I'm, I'm busy being happy. Yeah. Or planning or whatever, and not have time. And then, and now that, like, I, you know, I just got married. And so now that that took up a lot of time, like planning that because we went to Scotland to a castle and it was great. And it was magical. Um, and then now I'm I'm ready to get into it again. Plus, I'm in a new a new city and. It's I'm, I'm there's so much music here, too. And also, when you play live here, they pay you. Oh, they, wow. You, Refreshing. You, don't, you don't have to pay them. They like actually pay you. I, so, I, I, I don't even know what you're talking about. I like, don't so either. foreign to me. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? You, you want to pay like how much? And so I'm trying to get like stressed. Like, will you come just play an acoustic show with me so we can make 500 bucks? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, hmm. I'm, I'm getting back into it. <clears throat> um, I, um, I, just I, have need a, to, I have a oh. studio over here, so. If you Maybe need I'll any just... drum tracks. Thanks, Kels. Maybe I'll just like come over for a week and we'll just do an EP. Yeah. The ha we'll, ca we'll call it the happy EP. <laughs> 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 we'll call it um, domesticated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's, oh, there's nothing like it. I'm telling no. you. No. I love it. Oh my gosh. So you remember Perfect Girl? Yeah, of course. You know what the original, like in my diary, what the name of that song was, was <laughs> I'm not going to be your teenage housewife. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then, and How then ironic. And then we changed it to Perfect Girl because that was just the title. I'm not going to be your teenage housewife. And then I wrote the story about how this older man like basically wanted me to be his teenage housewife. And like how I had to leave. Peace out. Um, so that makes me laugh. And here we are, full circle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, life is crazy. It is crazy. <laughs> it's funny though. Yeah. Well, if you can't laugh, I mean, what can you do? More, yeah, more power to you. Because I don't know if I couldn't laugh at myself, I don't know where the hell I would be right now. Yeah. It's it's nuts. Okay. I've always wanted to know this from from singers that I know. Do you have a favorite type of microphone? 
like sparkly ones. Mm. I'm nice. just kidding. So- um, <laughs> um, a favorite type? I do. Because I, I, I remember the Charles Shaw one, you had the... I, yeah, I had that. I love the way that looks, and I still have her. Her name's Grace, and she's amazing. Is she the best sound that I like? I have to really, like, get <laughs> in there, you know? Like, I really had to grab her and, like... But, yes, the aesthetic of that microphone, I love um, so I mean, much. It's got its own emoji. It does? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. I got to use that more. Um, but I like, um, AKG. Yeah. Okay. And then I just like the standard, like, shore mics, like, what is it? 50, the 58. The 58, like, I don't know. As long as you, like, know how to look at me. I just, <laughs> I, I, I just, like, I'm, like, working the mic. What are you doing, Amy? <laughs> it's a microphone, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, um, yeah, that. Okay. I cool. like them all. Like I like every microphone. That's awful. And then the is it blue? The hanging one. Oh my god, I, Kelly. Yeah, I don't know. Don't make me look stupid. I, I always, I'm I, I look always stupid just, right next. To you. I I always just <laughs> I always just like if I'm in the studio with like Brett or whatever, I'm always like. Give me the one that sounds good for that I like. That sounds good, but I never really like <laughs> ask. I can't be bothered to like ask the technical stuff. That's totally. I've fun. been I've been spoiled. So have I. Actually, it's it's funny. I just recorded. Oh, I can't believe I'm going to say this. I just recorded thirty songs, and I used Logic Pro, and it sounds really good. I think it sounds pretty awesome, actually. But then uh, Udemy had a sale on a Logic Pro class, so I bought it for I think it was like ten bucks. And within the <laughs> within the first twenty minutes, I realized I recorded that album <laughs> completely wrong. <laughs> so, uh, needless to say, you know but that's how you recorded that. It. It's exactly so. It's like, not wrong. So to me, what what it what it shows me is that recording. And, and producing a record is 90% your ear and mm-hmm. 10% technical the stuff. Equipment. Oh, dude, we did Chasing Amy. We recorded all of those in a, like, they would, the boys would be in the other room. And then they'd say, go into the bathroom. It's like 900 degrees. And I'm sitting on the toilet being like, something I can live with that. <laughs> and they're like, hit the high notes. And I'm like, ah. Like on a toilet, just sitting there with like a little shore microphone, like nothing, like in a bathroom, and it came out fine. Yeah, I mean, yeah. what it sounds like a couple of them sound like they're in the bathroom, but whatever. <laughs> I think it adds to its charm. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta, it's you gotta, rock, man. yeah, exactly. You gotta stay raw for, for the uh, the real fans, <laughs> yes, for the homies, <laughs> for the OGs. Okay, I want to know, uh, so there's a lot of negativity that you could probably dwell on, but I don't want to dwell on that. I actually want you to go back and try to think, what was the most fun you've ever had while singing? Every time I sing. Ah, oh, awesome. Like, That's so cool. I mean, it's my favorite thing ever. So, like, it's so fun. It was really fun when me and TJ, we got into a little VW bug and we did the West Coast tour. And then when we did the um, the East Coast, the East like, Coast Christmas tour. tour, that was so yeah. And then you guys made me go on those fucking, that tall build, what is it? The Empire <laughs> State. Oh, my yeah. God. Remember, I was, like, crawling. It was yeah. Like, I was in numb. I'm you like, were, I can't stand up. You were literally having a panic attack. I was paralyzed in fear. Like, I couldn't move. I was like, because my brain works differently than a lot of people. Some people go up there and they're like, oh, look, we're on the building. I go up there. Oh, my God, I'm getting panic attack now thinking about it. <laughs> I go up there and think, how the heck did these people build this thing? What did they do? Like, 
we're so high. And then I'm thinking about like them hanging and eating their lunch. And then I'm like, yeah. oh my God. And then it, my brain goes there. Like, that's why I can't talk about space because what even is it? Like, it's so <laughs> big. Like, <laughs> how can we even like, what are we doing? We are spinning in a ball in the, in the stop, Just stop yeah. me now. Anyway, that's what that did to me. <laughs> But, <laughs> but that's my brain. But it was a really great experience. Um, glad we did it. Remember the the little bar, and then they like shut up. They they found out we were from LA, and they shut up all the equipment early. Was that? So it, where was that? It was like downstairs. I want to call them out because oh, we man. we were playing good. That was the one in in New York, right? Yes. You know, I I. I remembered like a couple of years ago. I remembered what that place was actually called. When we, when I lived in New York, I was like trying to find it. So like the and cafe I, or something cafe, yeah. But yeah, I, I totally like forgot what it was. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I just but remember me, oh, your friend driving us around looking for like the best pizza place. Remember that? in New York? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so nice of her. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, were you at the Roxy? Did you play with us at the Roxy? I think so. That was like a night. That was epic because it was completely packed and we were playing at the Roxy and like it was so fun and there was like all these little girls that were in like general hospital or like you know like soap operas or whatever like and they like were singing along and it was just it was so cool yeah every single every single was, musical moment was that the show that okay so it was you if i remember correctly you me yeah brett um it had to like, have been you it's once other, we started playing with that damn click track it was like some like vanilla ice looking dude on bass and then Patrick, Derek <laughs> on guitar. Was it Patrick? No, no, no. It wasn't. It was Patrick left already. He did. Yeah, he was like tumultuous his, affair. Yeah, he was. Yeah, that that whole thing happened, and I think he like went and started playing uh, on um, what's his face? His yacht, Paul Allen. Oh. So, okay. Yeah, he was like doing his he own left. thing. Oh well, some other dude that like wore his hat backwards and like baggy jeans and a t-shirt and totally looked like out of place. I think he might have only played like one or two shows with us. Oh, I'll probably yeah. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'd remember you if I saw you, but yeah, same here. I don't. I don't remember his name or. He was probably really. That's really nice of him to step in like that. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah. then there was like the green room back there and we felt like rock stars. Yeah, man. That that, that place will do it to you. That place that when was it's a packed good night. is like a yeah, it's happening. But when it's not yeah. <laughs> not happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But even when, you know, I don't know about you, but there's been plenty of times where I've gone on stage and there's two people three people and you know initial initially it's kind of like a bummer but then once you start playing the music it's just like it doesn't matter do you know in those times I find like I just feel like sometimes like my superpower is connecting to people um whether it's like comp well my sister tells me like my superpower is complimenting people I can't stop like just random, like it just comes out of my mouth, like <laughs> word vomit. But if yeah. I see some, if I see something in somebody, I'm gonna, I can't stop. Like, oh my god, I love your shirt, or that color looks great on you. Like, I can't stop doing that. It's uh, since I was a child, I can't. But in those moments when there's two or three people, I find like I can connect to them on a yeah. deeper level, and it's in those moments that I've made fans for life fans friends followers fan whatever you want to call it like connections for life like they still 
follow. They still, you know, tell me that they listen to the songs. They still ask when the next thing is coming out. And like, I think those moments are the most important and the most humbling and like, yeah, whatever. I don't care if there's one person or 90. Yeah. Or a million. (laughs) But just don't ask me to call you on the phone (laughs) because I'll friggin' freak out. (laughs) Yeah, there's there's been a couple of times where I think I've picked up the phone and and I'm like, "Uh, it's not going to happen. Oh, don't say that. (laughs) No, not because... Like I, I don't take offense or anything like that. I just I know. wanna be better. <laughs> so pick up the phone. No, I really, really, really do. Because I mean, I used to always be on the phone when I was a kid. Yeah. It's just it's like the smartphone. They just they get too big and I can't have that against my ear and then I'm doing other I just think as a society we're just doing too much. Yeah. I'm I mean, I'm doing a lot. And I, I fall into the same category. Like I would much rather text than get a phone call. In my head, but right. then when someone actually calls that, like I want to talk to you, then you're like, oh, we it's should. It's lovely. Talk. Yeah. Right. I think what it is for me is I need to know the end game. Like, all right. So just say you're taking me on a hike. I need to know how long this hike is. How many miles is it? And how long is it going to take? You tell me that, good, I'm golden. But if you take me on this mysterious hike, is it going to be seven miles? Am I going to die halfway there? Like, how long is this going to be? I need to know. Otherwise, I panic. So with a phone call, it's like, am am I going to be trapped? How do I exit? Yeah. Like, what, you know, it's... It, there's too many unanswered questions. So yeah, and when you're just a generally nice person, you kind of it's like I I, I feel bad cutting off a conversation, even yeah. when my kid's crying, <laughs> hungry. Oh my <laughs> like, gosh! Like I feel so bad, but I need to end this call because my kid is gonna die if I don't get to her. <laughs> right. It's like it's like that type of thing, and if you don't have a good excuse like that we just like talk forever <laughs> or no here's my thing though is people you say oh, okay well it's nice talking to you i gotta get going or um blah, blah blah and then they're like yeah it's you too oh my god so you know what and then they start a whole new conversation and you're like i'm never getting out of this yeah <laughs> there's no end <laughs> yeah so <laughs> see that's awesome i don't even remember what question I asked or <laughs> <laughs> what question I'm going to ask it just went off on this tangent I, I I think it's so cool like why were we even talking about phone calls it's so weird but anyway hanging out with me <laughs> <laughs> oh because you said yeah yeah anyway. I, I don't know, I don't, I don't know um, <laughs> <laughs> okay let's let's do one more question singer related and I, I feel like this is an, an obvious question but mm-hmm. one that it's still very interesting. What is your go-to karaoke song? Oh, um, it's it's ever changing. My go-to karaoke song was for a long time Black Velvet. Mm. Like first up, like I wanted to get it in before anyone else did because I'm like, vicious. <laughs> I'll do it better. But I do love singing me some Tennessee whiskey. Mm. I love that. I love I love the blues. I love the blues so much, so I like to sing, like, just anything, like, with that soulful kind of vibe. What else do I sing? Um, House of the Rising Sun. Oh, nice. I always give my own little twist on it. Um, what else? Well, you only asked for one. I could go on, because, like... Yeah, go on. I mean, every era, if you want. Every era. <laughs> When I was little, my mom used to always make me sing One Moment in Time. Nice. That, used, that was my go-to. Um, but, yeah, I would say those either Black – well, Black Velvet and Tennessee Whiskey I love to sing. Cool. And Have you the gone song. karaokeing at oh, all? Oh, and Just a Girl and Just a Girl. Oh, nice. I always do Just a Girl. <laughs> Um, just a girl. Um, have I gone karaokeing lately? I used to go like every. No, I haven't. Hmm. 
Kelly, I've been neglecting my voice. Okay. But so... you know where I have been doing karaoke? Huh. Even even that I haven't gone, but I pay for it like every week is Smule. I, oh. secret, I secretly do Smule. <laughs> I saw, I think you posted it on Facebook or something. And I saw Probably. It. I'm such a dork. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's my little singing outlet. I didn't know you, you had to pay for that. I was yeah. like, I joined well, and I want. was like, oh, this is going to be fun. And then you like, they make the you pay. Oh, okay. But here's the thing. I joined it years ago when it first started. And then I forgot about it. So I was paying two ninety nine a week, <laughs> a week for all of these years, not realizing it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's an option where you can just pay $49 for a year. Which is a lot cheaper than two ninety nine yeah. a week a week. And so I just recently was like, Amy, you're gonna be an adult. And you're gonna sing some cash. Cause yes, two ninety nine. Cause I would be like, Oh, it's just like, you know, buying a candy bar every week. But now it adds up. Yeah. It really does. But it's worth it to get all the songs. Mm-hmm. And it says VIP next to your name and that looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I have I have a a, a proposal. Okay. To get your voice back into shape. Um, I, I'm shape? pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that uh, "Just a Girl" is a song that you can put up on YouTube, and yeah. I'm pretty sure that there's a karaoke version of it. I do so it all the time. Why don't you sing and I play drums, and we'll do a YouTube cover? Done. Cool. It'll be the best version ever. Hell yeah. I just saw her I just saw her in Vegas in March at my bachelorette. She we were like this close. And really? she she looks so she's she's another like live performer that say what you want about her private life or whatever. She looks banging and I think she's 50, right? Yeah, yeah, she's And up she's there. she was high energy, amazing, gave the show of her life. Like, go you. I have nothing bad to say. Yeah, I have nothing but respect for her. Like, she, she was, it's weird. She, there's, there's all the, the, the diva singers, right? Yeah. And, and they're all highly respectable as well. But she came mm-hmm. from more of the like OC punk scene. Mm-hmm. And it's got to be really hardcore. Mm-hmm. to make it as anything a, a guy a girl whatever so for her to like come out on top like that and like just like take over the world with mm-hmm. that that first that one album not the first album i think it was like their second album or something mm-hmm. um, Tra- tragic kingdom yes oh my god i mean when that came out i would super glue i would find rhinestones and super glue them to my forehead <laughs> Literally, and go to school. And I remember going to the checkout line in a supermarket once, and a lady's like, is that tattooed in your head? Because I was so young. And I was like, no, it's super glue. And I don't think you're supposed to do that. Like, I don't care. Gwen has it. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, no, she's, she was my idol. That band and I think, like, Sublime, all those bands were just awesome. So for her... As a woman, as a young, really, really young, like she was really young. Cause I remember like the drummer was like 17 or 18. And then they made it huge, huge. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, no matter what she does after that, like it's, it takes a lot to get to that point from where she came up going with all those other bands that were, were playing around at, at that time. It's just, I, I I don't I don't think there's anything that she could do that would make me um not like her. The only thing was like the Blake Shelton thing. I was like oh. <laughs> that's all. And so I, really? I like yeah, I was like snooze for a little bit. And so like I was supposed to have uh go to Britney Spears, like cause, you know, I love Britney. I love me some Brit Brit. Holla. Um Free Britney. Um, no. So <laughs> hashtag free Britney. Uh, no, but then Britney canceled her thing. And then I was like, we had backstage passes with Britney Spears. Like that was going to be my bachelorette. And then 
before the Blake thing, like, if it was going to be Gwen, I would have been like, ah. But then it was, and it was like, I lost, I literally lost my voice because I sang every, shouted every song. And I was so enamored. Like, there's just video of me. I was just like, <gasps> like, it was just the best show. She gave a, like, that's what I love. Like, that's what I miss. Like, when someone gives you a show that you continue to think about and you're like, wow, like, I was in that show with her. <laughs> I mean, we all were. Every single person there was in it. Like, that's freaking performing. That's good. She bought me back. I give her a pass about the Blake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember the only time I saw No Doubt was at the Palladium. They were they played um, with the Long Beach Dub All-Stars, their first show, like right after uh, What's-His-Face died. Bradley from mm. Sub Sublime. So they did like a tribute show and no doubt played in, you know, Palladium, maybe 1,500 people, 2,000 people at the most. So it's not like super small like the Roxy, but not huge like the Hollywood Bowl or the Greek or anything like that. Right. That's like way in like Pomona or something? No. Um, Palladium is in Hollywood. Hollywood. Oh, okay. Never mind. I'm thinking of something else. Yeah. Um, I know where that is. On Sunset, I think. Yeah, it's like near the coffee bean. Is it near Nickelodeon? Uh, Studio? Nickelodeon. It's Studios. on the east side of Hollywood. That remember like, where the old spaghetti factory was? Yeah, that was on Santa Monica, right? Uh -uh. No. It was on Sunset. It was on Sunset. Wasn't it? Yeah. I don't. Know. Maybe you're <laughs> probably right. I don't know. I, I've only been there once, actually. The... Yeah, you just go down to the left, past the past the coffee bean, where you guys are playing the Californians. Oh my god! Oh my god! Let's just tell everybody like all of the places, Cal's. Do we Sorry. do 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 we talk like that? Really? <laughs> you know that bit from uh, SNL, right? No. Oh, you're gonna Google it after this. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> there, Google the Californians SNL. Okay. So basically <laughs> they come on and they talk like, wait, where are you going? Oh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to the chick like just say the Chick-fil-A. It's on Santa Monica, pass the thing, down the line, off the 405, <laughs> pass the thing, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, it's next to the old like spaghetti factory near where Ed Babbitts used to be, like that. <laughs> it's funny. Oh man. Yeah. So oh, that place. <sighs> yeah. So I'm sorry you didn't get that reference. Yeah, no. I but haven't once, watched once you watch it, you'll you'll have a chuckle. I haven't seen that show in Jeez. I'm gonna date myself, but it's been a long time. I need to be on it. I need to be your drummer on it. I, I know. <laughs> I was just in Knoxville and there was a little thing in it. Like we went to this little like outdoor beer garden kind of. Um, and then they had this chalkboard and it said, I wish. And then you can write your wish in chalk. And like people were writing or no, like I, I want to, this is what I want or whatever it was. And I wrote, um, host and musical guest of Saturday Night Live in the same night. It's That's... been it's been like top of my list since I was like a child. <laughs> when was this <clears throat> that you wrote on the It was in July. July. Oh, so it's fairly recent. Heck yeah. Okay. Cuz I'm okay. not giving I'm not giving up that dream. Well, I think yeah. you and I like you you mentioned something at the very beginning of all this, and you're like, you're like, I really thought we were going to, you know, take over the world. And I'm like, who's in a rush? Maybe we will. Who's to say we can't? Oh yeah, I've, like, I've maybe totally some, haven't like, closed that door. Maybe some like soundtrack song comes in, or we're doing it, and then all of a sudden we're it's like a blast, and we're like playing it on SNL, and like there I am being the goofy host. And doing all the skits and running around, like that would be my best. dream. 
because I get to go and I get to watch all that, go on stage, play a song, watch more of that, go on stage, play another song, and watch more of it. And, and then, then we go, go eat pizza. Yeah, exactly. Totally. And then we can go on the top of the um, Empire State. Empire okay. State. No, next time we'll do the uh, the the Freedom Tower because you're Is enclosed. It... You don't have to worry about being outside. That's not what I was worried about. No. You're just worried about how tall it is and all the people that might have died building the building? And the, yeah. No, it's not about anyone who's died. It's just my brain. It's just, it's amazing. It's like, I, I don't understand how they did it. <laughs> like, I, it just blows my mind that we did, like, humans did that. Like, Yeah, you don't have to understand. You just have to appreciate it. That's why I love going on. My time. brain likes to understand things. <laughs> That's why I try not to like tell people what's going on in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, too late. Too you're, late. You're on a you're on a show for for about an hour already, and oh. we've only covered one of three um, sections. That's, okay. That's awesome. Oh, should I should we be quick? Should I be quicker with my answers? Um, you know. You can do whatever you want. In, in fact, this next section that I'm going to get into. Uh, Excuse prob- me. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. So there you go. Okay. So now we're going into the job related questions, right? So this is where I'm like the employer okay. looking to hire somebody. So okay. it, um, and since this is not a real job, mm-hmm. things like burping and whatnot, will only add to the uh, hilarity that ensues. The entertainment value of of all these questions. Okay. So just keep it real like you've been doing. Um, So I want to know, what are your strengths, Amy? Well, um, I have a really high tolerance of liquor. Um, Just kidding. I was gonna go. I was gonna go with like a character, but now I'll just decide. You're asking Amy, right? Me. Oh, what are, yeah, I mean, what, yeah, I guess so. Was it funner with a character? It was. It was. It was kind of. Yeah. It was. Well, no. It's always more fun with you. I always have like an if like I'm on a TV type of thing. Like I have an edit thing where. Mm-hmm. If we were just in a room and you asked me these questions, I would go off on a tangent and you would think like. I'm Bob Saget, like, on one of his stand-up things. <laughs> like, truly, no filter. But then, like, I filter myself because I'm like, oh, what if, like, a child watches this? And, like, okay, so what are my strengths? I am, um, I'm a very kind human being. I care about what I do. So if I'm working for you, then I care about like what I'm doing. Like I care about the product that I'm putting out. Um, I'm a people person and I know how to like brighten up people's spirits. And my favorite thing is to be helpful and to make people laugh. Cool. What are your uh, weaknesses? I, um, talking on the phone. (laughs) 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 And... (laughs) Uh, sparkly things. I love sparkly things. So if I see <laughs> someone, <laughs> I like go for it. Also, um, cute things like puppies, weakness, um, kittens. I, if I get an audition, I won't come to work. Like I'll choose, I'll choose like singing or acting like over anything else. And, um, also family. Um, okay. Cool. Um, and also, I don't like to work like Friday nights or Sundays or <laughs> <laughs> any nights really, or like uh, Monday mornings. Understandable. You, mm-hmm. you, okay, D- domesticated. <laughs> Just <kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> um, where do you see your, where do you see yourself in five years? Hmm. It's such a that's such like a dumb question. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't see into the future. Like, 
I am not a psychic. Can can you try to be a psychic? Okay, like, do you have any crystals or? <laughs> no, um, in five years, I see myself <laughs> older. No, I'm kidding. Um, I have a record. Oh, is what kind of job is this though? Oh, oh my God, I totally screwed this part up. Okay, so that's why I'm like, like, what, what am I supposed to be like? Yeah. winning you, winning you over with. So because I will the... always like talk about acting and singing. Okay, so the first question is supposed to answer your question, which is, and I totally didn't ask that question, which is, what is your dream job? Oh. To sing and act. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now every question you answer. Just to be a working, like a working actor. Okay. On maybe, um, let's say, a hit TV series. Okay, that way so it's then... consistent. In five years. That's where I see myself. On okay. a, like, a, a hit TV series where I can live a normal life, like, on the, in the hiatus times, you know, you work for three to six months, and then you have the rest of the year to, like, travel or work on other little projects and, like, do things, but, and just, like, live a normal life and be able to do what I love. Like, no, I don't need to be, like, you know, tabloid famous, like nothing, just like consistently working actor, like doing something like I love. Cool. So you're not in it for the fame. You're more in it. No. For the, yeah. the craft and mm -hmm. the art and all of that. Yeah. It's like all I love to do. And, not, it, and that's how it's always been. And I think every time it's gotten too close to being, oh, this could be like famous, famous. I sabotage it. Because I'm a shy person, like, inherently. Unless you know me. Like, yes, I'm kooky and yes, yeah. I'm loud. But that's, like, me being shy. Like, I'm panicking inside. Um, I, yeah, I, I'm a private person. And I like that. But also, I think now that I'm an adult and I'm older, I would be able to handle it better. But it's not something I strive for. Like, I strive for, like, the talent. And, like, like look at Meryl Streep. She's cool. She's great. She got yeah. it. She got, like, she's fine. She's living her life, and she's acting and doing, like, really great things. And, like, that's that's what I, I like, look to be. Only, like, Bette Midler style, because she can sing as well. Mm, you know, okay. she does the singing and, like, beaches. Come on, put me in that movie. <laughs> so you yeah, touched yeah, upon something geez. that I, I feel is really interesting. You You said that now that you're you're older mm -hmm. wiser you don't care about certain things as much as you used to i have the ability to protect myself and i feel like that's such a what's it's such a ironic thing about life where the things you feel are so important when you're young when you get older they're not that important and it's so strange to me how life is like that because, you know, when I was younger and I wanted to be a drummer and I wanted to be a rock star and that's what I wanted to be. And it was the, the most important thing in my life. And now that I'm older and I look back and especially because it ha didn't happen and it's like, it's not that important. It wasn't that important. So it's just weird to me how life is is like that like you you almost get blinded by certain things but when you can step outside of yourself and step back and, and look at you know what's going on um it's almost like shit nothing is really that important you know other than maybe family i guess yeah i just think that we weren't blinded by things like i wasn't blinded i was misinformed like mm. I've been in the world. I've seen that world. And what I saw, I could have stepped over the threshold. And you know, you know, I did a record with Kim Fowley, right? Mm -mm. So I don't remember, was it before? I think it was before London. Really? Um, you know who Kim Fowley is, right? He made like the, what was it, The Runaways? 
He like. No, I don't. Never, no, I never heard of that. Oh, Google Kim Fowley. Um, but wait, wait, how do how do you spell it? I gotta write this down. K I M. Kim. F O W, L E Y. Oh, okay, Fowley. So I was at the knitting factory. And this man comes up, this tall man with white hair and piercing blue eyes, which is a theme in my life that's happened to me, <laughs> comes up to me with a bat, a plastic yellow bat, and said, you, because the Go-Go's, he like also created them. They were playing at the knitting factory. It was like some girls band, whatever. And the opening act didn't show up. He goes, you, can you sing? And I said, yeah, I'll sing. And then he goes, get on stage. I'm like, there's no music. There's get on stage and sing if you can sing. So I got on stage and sang Mariah Carey, like I still believe, like a cappella, just to entertain the people. And then he's like, now sing Hound Dog. And I did. And then he brings me backstage. And within 24 hours, he has me driving to Redlands and we made this whole like beatnik record. Like crazy. And it takes <laughs> oh, no, I'm not even kidding. Like, and he didn't drive and he lived in this house that had nothing in it except like stuffed animals in the living room lined up. And he's like, there were scratches on as well. And he said, the people who lived here before had a tiger. And like, I was like, where am I? And then the people that I was staying with, they're like, Amy, you can't go to Redlands alone with this crazy man. And he only ate green beans like out of a can and like with a fork colt. And he didn't drive. And so I had to pick him up and drive him to the studio. And I'm just like 21, you know, I just want to, Sing. And this is right before Avril Lavigne came out. Listen, right before. Av and so we made this thing and he took a picture of like he took photos like this all happened like so fast. Like it felt like someone and that's what they do. It happened so fast in that industry. And like we were just busting out songs. I was exhausted, but I, I wanted it so bad. And then he would tell me all these things, you know, trim up, blah, blah, blah. So he was taking pictures and like I had this my hair was up and like. I went like that, and there's one picture, and I had a tie on with skulls on it, and I was like that. And he used that picture with the thing and then started shopping me, like, within, like, a week and a half, two weeks to record labels. But they all think he's crazy. He has stacks and stacks of, like, paperwork where he's been in, like, all of these writer rooms since the 70s, and he, like, that's how he survived. It was, like, it was just crazy. And then... I was like exhausted and like, and then he started talking about like intergalactic, like he is from like another dimension. And like, I was just like, you're terrifying, like in my head. And finally I, I said, I can't, I started to shut down. And then he said, Amy, the only thing that's going to stop you from making it in this business is you, you have all of what it takes. You're going to stop yourself. And I was like, yes right now <laughs> and I ran and then like a week later I get a phone call like someone's like Amy are you on TV did you get your record deal and then lies gotta go make things so complicated was like on the freaking TV and she like looked like me when I was little and I was like no and she mm. had the tie but it was anyway I got a wow. funny tangent but yeah yeah that's <laughs> oh my god that happened yeah, that's uh, wow, crazy. That's what happens in LA. I mean, so, I, yes, what I'm saying, like your question was, or what you were talking about, is like, like the fame thing. Like, that's what I mean by like, I, I saw it, but then I, I, I did. I pulled myself back because I know if I stepped through that, like you know, mystifying smoke and mirrors, it's not real. And I wasn't ready for that. And I would not have been able to protect my heart and my, my soul. And like, that's the most important thing to me because I never want to lose that. And I never want to like, you know, I never wanted to like be something different. Yeah, totally. Huh. Anyway. That's, anyway. That, that's friggin' crazy. I thought, <laughs> I thought the stories that you told me before were crazy, but that probably, well, no. That's, Where's the record there, though. now, though? Because he just died recently. Uh, and so I'm mm. like, it was actually really 
the strangest experience and like the coolest record but at the time I didn't know who the heck he was there was not a lot of like googling stuff yeah. I had a flip I had a flip phone mm-hmm. and then I had my friend Jeremy he had brought me there one time and he's like you're never coming back here again and then a lot of the times these guys that I would work with they tried to control me and I had to go to therapy for that and then my therapist tried to control me. And I was like, I'm here for this reason because, like, I don't, like, I, I'm perfectly capable of handling, like, it, it was like, yeah, it was, that's why I ran. Like, I, don't control me. We're working together. Let's, let's do this together. So, yeah. Screw them all. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So, yeah, you're you're interviewing for your dream job. So don't worry about anyone trying to control you right now. I'm, I'm oh, just I'm trying not. to get you. Your, oh, your no, dream. I was saying in the past. Not now. I don't care. <laughs> now I'm like, I don't care. You're <clears throat> control you're, me. You're in a good spot right now. Yeah. Um, OK. Uh, what do you offer that most other people don't? wit mm. <laughs> I'm funny I bring a lightness in the room like to your office capabilities oh yeah we're now I'm thinking like we're in an office it just feels very like office questions yeah. like maybe I yeah. but yeah no, no like for a set or wherever I think I bring a sense of like joy like I make people happy like I make people laugh and that makes me happy. So I bring that. Yeah. There's like there's you'll a notice lot of the difference. That, I think. Yeah. You'll know you'll notice the difference with me on there, on set or in your office, as opposed to not. And when I come, you're like, Oh, where have you been? I needed your goofiness. So, you know, like that takes me back to the first time I met you. And I still remember actually, um, because the, the, the funny thing is, the way that you were dressed and you had this, like, you were, like, if you were in, in a crowd of people like Christina Aguilera and Avril, Avril Lavigne and Gwen Stefani and all of those other singers, you would blend in naturally, seamlessly, right? So when you're by yourself in this studio... And the first time I met you, like I walked in and, and you're like at the board with with London going over some stuff. And it's like, oh, whoa, this like this girl is like. She's like the real deal, like it, it, I didn't even have to hear you or anything, right? Just the way that you were like, all, oh, my God, like, put together. So I was like homeless. <laughs> well, it didn't look like it. So it looked you're to really me like fun. you were. Like, it, like if you if you see it from from my side, I'm I was like playing with a bunch of crusty punks, you know. Like, mm. um, it wasn't like we were we were just all kind of like playing the music we grew up to. So when Patrick asked me to 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 play with you guys, it was kind of like me almost sort of like stepping out of my comfort comfort zone and stepping up into not necessarily like the, the major leagues but the next level up so you know when Gosh, you're going into I thought that about you guys <laughs> I literally like every day I'd feel like so insecure and so sad and like I didn't want to mess up because I didn't want to let you down well see that's the that's the beauty of it is like the the perception thing is 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 so weird because it's so weird so far from the truth like when when i first saw you i was like whoa this like i was intimidated and i didn't know like how you're going to be like person personality wise and whatnot but you couldn't have been the the nice like you you're like the nicest person that probably i, I met up until that point <clears throat> as far as like playing music and mm -hmm. not just the nicest person but like as far as working together I'm real, yeah. Playing you know? together, like 
you made everything so you were very uh what's the word low accommodating. maintenance oh good accommodating yeah all of that all of those like adjectives that you like to be called uh in the workplace you know like um uh, just you can let yourself like you i can let you be you and you'll let me be me and where we all kind of like just trust that okay you're That's the best jam. person for for your position i'm the best person for the like there's no insecurity there's no yep. nothing like once we got to know each other and <clears throat> you know shed all of that like superficial exterior we were like just like court and a lot of it had to do with all of our personalities we were just like really good people yeah so we were lucky it it really does like go you know when you say you light up a room like you really do and it does like it it does so much more than what people i think you know give credit for for that kind of quality yeah well my whole thing in life is just like i don't know how to do your job as well as you do you like is that the fill yeah do the fill that you want like <laughs> like i don't care like is just make sure you use the brushes so you don't like overpower my brush. <laughs> like <laughs> like but just i want people to shine like i want everyone around me to shine you know i i never that's that's why i loved being in the band like and i like having a band name and not like it feels weird having like a solo name because i just i like being a part of like a bunch of people that want to make good things yeah totally good vibes awesome. hire me no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> no i'm not <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I got one more job-related question. Okay. Um, do you have any mentors or people that have helped you along the way? Oh, so many. I mean, you've helped me. You're helping me now. I mean, just converse, you know, like I, people, like humans, people at airports, like, you know, when you fly places and you're sitting at the airport bar or like whatever, waiting for the plane and you just have a deep conversation with people because that always seems to happen to me um i i kind of like those are all my teachers i i i listen to these people and i listen to people's advice or their stories and like and how they've made it through like horrific things or amazing things and that's mentoring and just voice teachers growing up and people that have um opened their doors to me and their hearts and helped me along the way and too many mentors yeah that's great so many that's yeah. awesome i i'm i'm so in that same boat like that's part of the reason why i'm doing this whole interview thing is just to talk to people to get to know their stories i feel like every single person has an interesting story to tell yeah. not just the celebrities or you know the famous people i uh, love that kelly yeah you know like i was telling uh someone else that i wish that i could go back in time and talk to every single person that's ever lived because i really do <laughs> feel like that each person has like a story that you can learn something from yeah so, i believe cool. that too yeah it's like uh uh, it's it's awesome. I I I hope I I just wish other people were, you know, as interested because, you know, there's so much sadness and I, I'm sure you're in the same boat. I've, um, you know, there's there's been a lot of people in, in my life that have gone through depression. Mm -hmm. um, far too many people than I care to know that have um, committed suicide, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of that is because. Um, they don't feel like they have anyone to talk to. Like everyone always says, oh, if you want to talk, um, you can always come to me and whatever. But I don't know if that's really the case, you know? Like yeah. there's so many people that will say that but don't actually mean it. Right. And then I've been in the place where you're in the dark place and you isolate and you know that people have said that. But when you're in that place, 
the last thing you feel comfortable doing is reaching out to somebody. Yeah. Because who cares about you? You know, like, yeah, you say it, but who cares about my problems? Who cares that, like, I think I'm losing my mind. Like, it's, it's like a shame thing or like an embarrassment thing or totally. you just don't even have the strength, you know? Yeah. Like and, and it's, it's crazy because actually I follow, <laughs> I follow Alex Rodriguez on, on Twitter and he said, like, he, he was just hanging out with um, Jerry Jones. And he's like, the, w- one of the, the most important things that I've learned is to surround yourself with important people. And to me, like, yeah, I guess that's, that's a, a good thing to, to strive for. But, you know, when you do go through, because I've said this on, on this show a couple of times where, you know, both you and I have gone through really really hard times and have been in places that we aren't proud of Mm -hmm. and nobody with that kind of mentality nobody wants to be around you during those like dark times so Mm -hmm. you don't even want to be around you exactly yeah (laughs) so it's just like it's kind of a a double-edged sword where um, you don't want to ask for help you feel like nobody wants to approach you for help you're yeah it's just in like this really really dark place but um i genuinely mean it i feel like uh not maybe not a hundred percent but a good percentage of people that are are in that spot if if they were to find that one person that that really is genuinely like cares about them and their story and and a, a, a lot it would go a long way just to hear them out. They don't even have to help them. Like right. And just so that that person knows that someone else cares about where they are, I think will go like so far. Yeah. I so, agree. Yeah. I don't know what the next step is. Like I'm, I'm hoping that things like this, these interviews, uh, help in that sense where, uh, at least if you're in a dark place, know that there are people out there that like actually care. It's just, I guess it's a matter of, of finding, you know, that person. Cause yeah. I know if, if any one of my friends or, or family members um, were in a dark place, I would definitely be there. And I would hope that they would, you know, know that I would be there and, and genuinely be there. And I'm sure you're in the same boat. But yeah. It's just... I just hope that, when you're in a dark place, you, you, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. It's like, how do you come out of it enough to even reach out for help? Yeah. Because, like, because it's such a stigma on it. Like there's, it's, you feel like, oh, I'm broken. I'm a burden. I'm this and that, you know, you tell your, we, we tell ourselves like all of these things and like, it's, it's, you're right. It's like a double-edged sword or whatever. Yeah, it's <clears throat> it's pretty crazy. I, just, I I just hope that you know now that you and I are in similar like parallel paths where we're in this happy place. It feels like we've both overcome a lot. So much. Where we are, you know, and I want people to know that. <clears throat> It gets better. It does get better. It really does. It's and crazy. Sometimes it sucks again, but it gets better. <laughs> That's just it always life. gets better. It yeah. always does. Like I'll, I just went through this beautiful thing, and then I went through a patch where, a couple weeks ago, I was at work, and out of nowhere, I was like, "Yeah, it's August third. It's my birth month. I'm gonna celebrate every day." And then, I had a panic attack. Like the first one in two years and it came out of nowhere and it rocked my world. Like it shook me to the core. Like, but the people I worked with, they were amazing. They like pulled me out of it, but there's a lasting effect with that because then every day for the next two weeks, I woke up, am I going to have another one today? And it's, and then it takes, it puts you in a depression and then it makes you think like there's something wrong with you. And it took me, Every single day waking up and being like, why am I depressed? Like, why is this happening? There's nothing to be depressed about. But yes, the world is depressing. And so 
I think just we as people have to realize like the world is depressing. And if you're watching too much news, turn it off, go find your friends. You're it, it sucks and it's sucking. It's sucking right now, but you, you have to find the good things, find yeah. music again, take your notebook, start writing. Even if it's one word, take one step at a time and then boom, you're out of it. Full moon comes and you're ready to go. <laughs> Brilliant. At least that's what happens to me. <laughs> <laughs> and then next month when I get my period, it happens all over again. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. I'm lucky to be a guy. I don't have to worry about that kind of thing. <sighs> I know. I don't take it for granted, though. Not, like being with my wife for, uh, well, we've been married for three, three years but we've been together for 10 years. Oh my gosh. And yeah, I I I don't envy her being a woman, a, a strong woman. It takes so much to be a strong woman and yeah, I don't know if I if I was a woman if if, if I would be like <clears throat> as strong as my wife. She's she's pretty awesome. So So yeah. are you though? Hat, hats off to women. I think uh you guys are the best. I have Thanks. a daughter now, so <clears throat> hopefully oh, she. Cow. Yeah, Good man. Daddy. It's I love it's that the story. best. It's the best feeling in the world. There's Aww. nothing. So there's nothing that I love more than waking up, going into her room, and just telling her good morning. And she, she every morning, she wakes up, she rubs her eyes, she opens her eyes, and she sees me or and my wife. And she has this huge smile mm -hmm. and it's like, now I can like, I can crush mountains now, you know, it's like, it's such an amazing feeling. So, and, and the thing is, is I want to be there for her for forever. Yeah. I, I don't want to be that dad that failed their kids, especially their like daughters, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, man, it's just, it's like, the best thing in the world like I, I for the longest time I didn't even want kids and now it's just I I, I can't they even, never do I can't, can't even think of it any other way it's 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 perfect so I love it. <laughs> so now um I know that you are happily married okay so these these next questions are so they're supposed to be speed dating questions um and you can you can take them as speed dating questions, but they're kind of more just like get to know you on the, the light, fun, personal side. Okay. For fun. Okay. If was, so. If I was single, right? If you were single, um, you know, I don't, I don't think, sure. Why not? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the questions. Well, I guess we'll yeah. just, we'll they, cross that bridge when we get they're, there. They're actually, they're, they're very clean. Fun okay. questions, nothing like too crazy. Um, okay. So, for instance, the first one: Are you a meat eater or a vegetarian? I like meatballs. Meatballs. I like all the meats. I used to be a vegetarian for thirteen years. Then I went to Ecuador and I was forced to eat a guinea pig. And then after that, I was like, "Give me a meatball." And so there you go. Now I eat meat. Whoa, that's that's. Kind it of... had a face on it. It was awful. Okay. <laughs> it tasted like chicken, but like horrified chicken. That, that's like a, there's definitely missing context <laughs> it's called cooey google it. it's cooey. a guinea pig yeah it was on a stick and its face looked like this wait then, it was like a whole guinea pig yeah i only ate a piece of it because i was on a mountain in ecuador and they were like well 13 years vegetarian and they were like well when can you say when you're in an audition and the part's hard you can just say you know what all these girls are just sitting here in LA but you were on top of an, a mountain in Ecuador and you ate a guinea pig and I'm like give me the guinea pig <laughs> and so then I ate it and then I was like can we get a meatball and then that was it wow. back to meat but I might like I think eventually I'll have to phase out because the meat here is just not probably the healthiest for us but anyway that's a whole different story yeah yeah you can go down rabbit holes with that kind of oh stuff. i can go down rabbit holes with anything oh i'm on 20 percent battery all right let's rapid fire okay this. yeah let's do um okay 
Hot bath or shower? Oh, I like them both. Both? That's good. Yeah, because I like my baths in the winter, and I have jets in my bath, and that's so nice. Uh, um, but I also like the shower because I like the bath, the shower after the bath. Really? Because I, yeah, because when you're sitting in the bath, like you're sitting in, eventually you're <laughs> sitting in your own scum, like let's just call it that, and then you have to wash it off. So, both. And you can't wash your hair in the bath. Got it. Because then, like, your feet is on your hair and, like, you know what I mean? Like, everything that was on you is, like, in your hair. Yeah. You need I mean, both. I haven't taken a bath in years. Oh, so. it's so good. <laughs> okay, so what about um, coffee or tea? Come on. Why do I like everything? I love coffee, but I also love tea. Like, tea at night, coffee in the morning. There's, there's nothing wrong with liking both or everything. Okay. You don't always have to be black and white. I that I think that's the one of the problems with. And I'm not going to get too far into politics, but one of the problems with society, I think a lot of times people try to be black and white when you don't really necessarily need to be. So, well, everyone's like, "What's your favorite color?" I'm like, "The rainbow." They're like, "You can't." <laughs> yeah. That's are you LGBT? I'm like, they didn't own the rainbow. Like it came before <laughs> them. Like I like all the colors. I like all the colors, especially I, glit glitter. I always go to color combos because I'm a graphic designer. So mm. combinations, right? Red and white, or white and blue. Those are always really nice combos. Black and yellow, for some reason, that's always a nice. Boston, black and yellow. Black and yellow. Boston black. Bruins, right? Or black and yellow. Mm-hmm. So anytime, like. I see a sports team. Usually they got the colors going on, right? So the, the color combinations are always really good in sports uniforms or whatever they call them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I always go with color combos. Yeah. I got you off topic. Um, Sorry. Oof. I don't know if you'll be able to, to answer this one. What's your favorite movie? Oh, um, True Romance. Oh, that's a great movie, yeah. I like that one. <laughs> um, and also, oh, there's one more. Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm. It's a Shirley Temple movie. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've never seen that. <laughs> oh, my God, all the Shirley Temple movies. Oh, and anything with Judy Garland. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Cool, awesome. <clears throat> oh, and Beach, Beach, oh, my God, I could keep going. Oh, and Hocus Pocus. Oh, and the oh, and the Princess Bride. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a great one. I actually met um, uh, Farm Boy. What's his oh name? Oh my gosh, Car- you did. Carrie Carrie you Elwes. Elwes, yeah. Yeah. Farm he's... Boy, <laughs> fetch me a pail of water. I have Farm Boy upstairs. My husband really has a Farm Boy. Yes, he'll fetch me the pails of water. <laughs> I'm like, what? And I even say it in that voice, Farm Boy. And he'll do it. <laughs> it's like the greatest. I'm so lucky. Uh, that's funny. You're the princess bride. <laughs> do you know how we like got to how the whole story about why we got married in a castle in Scotland is because we were celebrating um, our engagement. And like he thinks it's funny when I talk like Veruca Salt. And so I, I saw, I saw like a VRBO of like a castle and I was like, I want to get married in a castle in Scotland for our wedding. He's like, find one, babe, let's do it. And then oh, I wait. did. So none of you, neither of you are, are Scottish? We do have Scottish roots, but oh, okay. I'm obsessed with fairies and that's the land of fairies. And like, I wanted to get married in a fairy forest and, um, it just happened. It was just perfect. But anyway, that's a whole other story. <laughs> Movies. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Awesome. I love the tangents that come from these questions. It's really cool. Do you have, or what is your biggest pet peeve? Ugh. Mouth noises. Mouth noises, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Mm, Yeah, it's just so good. I can't. Those, like, videos where people are like... (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like, I forget what it's called. It's called something, but... They make like these noises and it's very quiet and all you hear is like or they're crunching a chip. No. And that's what I say to Adam. I'm always like, you know why I married you? Because I like the way you crunch. Like 
I can live with your crunch. I cannot live with, you know, Barry down the street's crunch because no. Learn so how to crunch people. What happens when you're like confronted I get rage. with that? Yeah. I, but it's not that person's fault. So <laughs> I'm not even kidding. It's, it's called misophonia. It's actually like a thing. Like the back of my neck gets super hot and <laughs> I start to go in a rage like internally and I'm just like, and I can't not hear it. And then like the other day, my sister, when I was at her house, like I literally wanted to punch a hole through a glass wall. God bless her. All she was doing was being cute and eating nerds while she was editing a photo. And I've never heard a person. She sounded like a cow eating all its teeth. <laughs> I'm like, what are you? And if people are eating ice, no, like it hurts me anyway. So then I tweeted about it. I was like, my sister is eating this right now and I can't deal. And then the next morning she's like, you just blasted me on Twitter last night. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. It was like my way of like release. Cause I couldn't say to her, shut up. Cause it's not her fault. <laughs> Mouth noises, pet peeve. Okay. Right. And also <laughs> mean people. Yeah. Mean people but suck. Mean people are mean. Yeah. I hate mean people. Yeah. Um. <laughs> oh. How would your best friend describe you? I don't know. Ask them. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm asking you. Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Does it make you uncomfortable? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, that's exactly what I don't want on this interview. So. I mean, I don't know. How would they? Hopefully, I, I only know who what I would hope they would describe me as, right? I guess they would well, describe. It depends on which best friend you're asking about. Like one of them would say, "I'm very competitive," and or like Brett, he's one of my best friends, and he would say, "I'm a nightmare dressed as a daydream." <laughs> <laughs> would he really? That's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> He'd be like, "Oh, she's a nightmare," but he loves it. Um, yeah, totally. Like a good nightmare. A nightmare you don't want to wake up from. Hmm. Hmm. It's, like, a, uh, all right, a glittery unicorn nightmare. Okay. That you don't want to wake up from. Yeah, I, I can get on that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you can ride that boat? Yeah. I. You know, I actually should reach out to him. It's been so long since we've talked. He's in Australia, but he'll be back Tuesday. Okay. <clears throat> Is he... He's he back started his own business, right? I have no idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, just, I, just, just, I don't know. I have... Yeah. Because I, I, I remember when I... Um, when I was working in West Hollywood at the, the print shop, uh, Patrick would come in all the time to get stuff printed and then actually uh brett was like delivering stuff for people and oh, he had yeah. a delivery sent to or there was a del delivery that he had to deliver to my work and he didn't know that i worked there so he like w work walked in and we saw each other and i was like oh shit what the hell and then he was saying how he was like trying to actually start his own delivery was it a delivery business? Anyways, he was trying to start his own business. And I think, like, the next time I saw him, he was, like, actually doing okay with his own business. So I was just wondering if hmm. that's still a thing. I'll let know. Brett tell you about that. Okay. <laughs> I don't want him to, like, watch this and be like, why are you talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I should, I should definitely reach out. Okay, so Wait. I have only... I only have a couple of more questions because I know your battery's dying and, and, yeah. and I got to get to the baby soon. Yeah, um, baby. Yeah. Have you traveled anywhere fun lately? Not your wedding, because we already know about that. But, but I mean, it was so fun. England, Scotland. I, we went on a road trip when we got back. Um, we took a sprinter van. Like those, it's like a, a camper van 
It's like a Mercedes camper sprinter van. Oh, called. okay. okay. Um, and there's a bed in the back and a little sink. We put the dogs in there, and we drove from Utah to Massachusetts to Cape Whoa. Cod. Yeah. And then, but I had this app that was like offbeat attractions. So along the way, we would like find like the world's largest hand that from like, you know, that from like Star Trek. <laughs> You know what I'm talking yeah. about? And yeah. it's like in someone's front yard. And like we went and like we would just take little quick selfies and like get on our way. But and I don't know. Well, was it like a sculpture or something? It was like a wooden thing that someone oh, built like okay. in, in that yard like in the 80s or whatever. And it's still there. Um, and there's just little offbeat attractions. Like the world's largest ice cream cone, you know. We didn't go to that one. But then a couple of them didn't exist anymore and we would like go off and Adam would be like where are we going did you google it to make sure that it's still there and it like wasn't there and I would just laugh because <laughs> we just drove around for an hour and we just wanted to like get to the next state it was so we drove to Cape Cod and then we drove from Cape Cod to Tennessee to see his family and then we drove from Tennessee all the way back how long did that take 37 hours to Massachusetts um, straight if you drove straight 37 hours and then I think it was like 20 to Tennessee and then like 37 back wow with two dogs one has diabetes and needs two shots a day uh, yeah it was fun though so you I know I drove, you're, you're, you're I, definitely I, a dog person, right? Wait, I just have but, to say, I drove, Adam drove the whole way, and I drove once for, like, 10 minutes, and then I looked to him, and I was like, babe, I'm, I drive, like, my strength is not, like, I'm not a strong swimmer, and how did I say it? I said it really funny at the time, but I was like, I'm not a strong driver, just like I'm not a strong swimmer, and so he's like, pull over, and the poor guy had to drive the whole thing. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. god! Oh my god! I just can't. Okay. You so know like, you, you guys have to get a a Tesla. It'll just drive itself. Oh yeah, we were imagining that too. We could both sit in the back. Yeah. <laughs> so what were you saying after, before oh, I cut you off? Yeah, you. I know you're. Uh, you're a dog, dog person. I think mm. you've had a dog, ever since I've known you. So. It's crazy what you do for your dogs because oh, you were saying how you had to give one of your dogs two shots a day. Yes, and... And she just she just went blind like overnight, like, literally in the past two days. Like, yeah. Yeah, I just, my wife and I just put one of our dogs down a couple mm. months ago. It's so and sad. It, it is the worst thing ever. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I've... Uh, I've been to funerals of family members and friends who've um, committed suicide or who have died like way before their time, and uh, it's horrible and it's sad and it's nothing I want to go through again. But putting your dog down, I mean, that was like up here. Oh, was, I know. It was just the worst. So. And we it's, put it's, we put our dog we had to put our Great Dane down last November and like wow. 180 pounds he was 11 and they usually only live to like nine or ten but he was there one minute and then he's not yeah. and I'm just like oh. I never sobbed so hard yeah I I I don't cry hardly ever and yeah I was I was pretty much bawling. Ugh. Yeah, I, okay, let's get off of this. Please, yeah, because I'm like, <laughs> oh, like, that's like been on my mind because she's getting old and like, oh, puppies. Yeah. I love pets. They're, we, we don't deserve them. I mean, I'm that, so that's, grateful. That's basically where my wife and I are at. It's like this last one, we almost feel like she wasn't a dog. She was like, just like, like one of us. So they are. It hurt really bad, and I think maybe it's still fresh, but yeah, we 
we just we don't want another dog. No. Like, unless my little girl comes up to me and is like, "Daddy, please, I want a dog." Oh like, how God. can we say no to that? But otherwise, I yeah. want you to be my dog. Be like, "Daddy, please, I want a pony. <laughs> I want to name it Unicorn." No. <laughs> please, Daddy. <laughs> Yeah, see, like, I don't, I, I don't, I think I'm just going to, like, wilt. I'm not going to be, uh, I'm going to be the good cop. I, my wife's going to have to be the bad cop. That's all right. Yeah. Okay, so last question. Um, I've been, I've been uh, using this question a lot because I, I've, I've liked the answers that I've gotten. Are mm-hmm. you an early riser or a night owl? Um, I used to just it used to fluctuate and I used to be really like people still think they're like, Oh, you stay up all night. Like literally I would stay up all night all the time. Um, but now I am forced because my dog has to eat every 12 hours and get a shot every 12 hours. So no matter what, I have to get up at six forty-five every morning and make sure that I feed her and give her a shot. Otherwise she'll die. So, um, I'm an early riser. Mm. Who'd have thunk? Yeah. So I as know as long you're... as she lives, I can't sleep in. <laughs> I know you're in in Utah, so mm-hmm. it's um, it's kind of in a weird spot time wise, right? Like, like if you're on the East Coast and you're you know three hours ahead of LA, um, the sun comes up and goes down pretty much at like the normal time that it's supposed to. But like if you're in one of those weird time zones, the sun comes up and goes down at like weird times. Oh yeah, you're right. Is that something that happens? Yeah, like it'll it'll in the summer it was like light out to like ten. Really? Oh. Well, I, I kept saying, it's broad daylight. It's like 9.45, it's broad daylight. And I was like, why do you keep saying broad daylight? It's like not even that bright out. I'm like, the sun <laughs> is still out. It's still light out. Like, it just blows my mind. But huh. then, yeah. Yeah, so it, it stays lighter. Light because we're, it's the elevation, too. Oh. We're, we're closer to the sun. Now, so what about hot. the sunrise? Is it earlier or later? I don't know. I can't be bothered. Mm. Yeah. No, no, I'm just kidding. I, I honestly, I can't tell. I think it's, I think it's casual. I think it's. Like over here, um, I was talking to one of my other friends and he's an early riser and he, he usually wakes up at four and once in a while I'll wake up at four and it's like, damn it, I can't go back to sleep. And in those, those times I realized that uh, at least in the summertime, the sun comes up at around 5.30 or so. Which I, I think wake is... up at 4 sometimes. Really? Yeah, and it's so weird. And I'll look and I'm like, why do I always wake up at 4? Yeah, it's it's a weird thing. It's like 4 o'clock. 3.58, 4.02, but never or like four past that. <laughs> that was the latest. No, like last week. Because I woke up at 3.56 or 3.56. 52 and then 426 and i'm like what does it mean yeah but, it's crazy yeah but yeah like when it's weird when i do wake up at that time and i can't go back to sleep and i'm like okay sleep's not happening i just gotta like be okay with it once i get to that point it's actually really really nice mm-hmm. you're all by yourself you have it's, the whole day the whole day it's still kind of dark you get to watch the sunrise which is just as good as the sunset but even better because it's not like filled with other people you kind mm-hmm. of have it to yourself i love the sunrise on the east coast i used to actually wake up and then drive to the beach and then watch it nice. and, every, and everything would wake up as the sun came up over the water and it was like yeah because the sun just start rises seeing... on the east That's yeah right so it's like that's the best place to see the sunrise. How it's cool. So cool. <laughs> it's... Well, I mean, I don't know about you, but I had 
a blast. I did too. I love you. Well, you know I, that. <laughs> it was so great catching up. It's been it's been a while. Yeah, but it feels like like no time. Yeah, that's the great thing about friendship, right? Like yeah. Good friends mm -hmm. is you know, it it doesn't matter how long it's been um to just to have those handful of people that you can count on to just be what you remember them just happy good people yeah it doesn't matter like how long it's been it's like I think we'll always be really good friends me too and when you have that type of relationship in your life uh yeah it's always it's always good to just once in a while say hi water how's it how's it going yeah <laughs> exactly give it a little sunshine nurture it a little bit yeah mm -hmm. i agree and it's it's so and you know it's great to actually talk to you and see that it's weird how like kind of we're on similar path you know like who does that is it weird yeah. or is it awesome? i don't know it was definitely awesome someone once told me don't say it's weird. Don't give it that energy. Mm. And I was like, why? Weird's not bad. Weird's yeah, I good. Don't, I don't think weird's bad. I don't either. I think maybe like back in like the 90s, it, maybe it was a bad word. Mm. Yeah. But now it's like weird's in. Weird's the new black. Weird is like. Weird's the new pink. <laughs> <laughs> Weird to me is like, it just does it, not that it doesn't make sense, but it's almost like when it does make sense. It makes sense so much that it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> it's just awesome. Cool. That's, get it. We I, get it. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. It's oh, totally no. awesome. Uh oh. Did, did that do anything? It went no. doo doo doo. Okay. Okay. I have yeah. No, that's, oh. that's bad. We should we should cut it off. Oh, we could do this for hours. Oh yeah, for sure. Let's do it again. Great, awesome. Okay. I'm totally down. Okay, me too. Whether we're recording or not. Me too. Cool. All right, Ames. Well, uh, right. we'll keep in touch. Okay. Thank you for doing this. And Thank you. Uh, yeah, I hope it. I hope it was fun at least. It was so fun. <laughs> okay. Good. If it wasn't, you would know by my body language. Oh, yeah. I'd be like, I'd be like, mm -hmm, okay, so, um, is it? Can I go? Yeah, like, oh, look at the time, you know. Yeah. It's out there. Damn good. batteries. <laughs> I know, and I could plug it in, but I would have to undo these. Yeah, that's the brilliance and of Apple. And I get it. Too. I totally get it. Yeah. But you have a baby to go take care of. I do. Yeah. She's she's screaming and crying and, and almost ready to die. So I got to. Oh, my gosh. Is she? No, just... Oh, OK, good. No, she's probably totally fine. But, you know, I like to check up on her and make sure she's OK and make sure she's got her pacifier within like her little arms reach. So. Oh, you're a good daddy. <laughs> Try to be. I love that. All righty. Well, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's do this again soon. Yes, please. And then, uh, you know, whenever you need a drummer, give me a call. Always. <laughs> Just for, like, real stuff and not catfishy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole other story. Oh, you're full of them. Uh, I got you know, duped. That's why we got to get back on this, because you're, we didn't even go into any of the, the real stories. It's, no. It's crazy. <laughs> we'll save it for the book. To, you're good at pulling the stories out, so I'll have to like use. You'll have to help me write my book. I, I have a, a bachelor of fine arts degree in creative writing for entertainment. So okay, you can ghostwrite my book. <laughs> I'll definitely ghostwrite your book. Yay! <laughs> I'm lazy. Um. <laughs> Good, I'm not. So like, there you go. Perfect oh, well, team. see, I need, that's what I need. I need a teammate. <laughs> I need a servant. Oh, we won't go there. 
<laughs> I'm going to leave you with this. That was the best part of my wedding is like I had, I shouldn't call them servants, but I had helpers. Like they were in the castle and I kept saying, Adam, it's a dream come true. Cause I always say I want a servant. He's like, you can't say that here. And I'm like, but she's my servant. She calls me Miss Amy. Like, uh, it was, it was <laughs> so good. One day. Huh? Yeah. Well, let's make it happen. Yes, please. All right. I love you with all of my heart. Same here. I love you. I hope uh, you have all the happiness that you want. And, you know, likewise. Yeah, we'll likewise. Be, uh, we'll be keeping in touch for sure. Yeah, we're going to do some music because I'm ready now. Awesome. I'm ready now. Okay. All right. righty. Take care. Bye. Bye. Life was a struggle. I look impending doom. Trouble after trouble. Storm blows in. Safe inside your bubble. You said you're never gonna. Fall in